The eviction backlog in New York City has left one set of landlords no choice but to shame their tenants after they stop paying rent. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing in Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's going over the situation that's happening with just one set of small landlords up in New York City. Now, as everyone knows, New York is obviously a very, very tenant-friendly, anti-landlord place. So they had one of the longest state eviction moratoriums in the entire country, which ended back in January. However, what it did was it created a backlog of eviction cases, like 200,000 eviction cases. So even though now landlords are able to evict their tenants, there's, you know, it's going to take months before they're actually able to get their cases heard in court and then get those tenants up out of their properties. So this has left a lot of small landlords in a bad situation. So even those tenants who didn't qualify for protections from the eviction moratorium, they're getting a free ride in these landlords' properties while they're waiting to hear their cases. I mean, it's it's really, really a bad deal. And that's exactly what's happening in this article. So these landlords, they haven't been paid rent in months, and these tenants are completely screwing them over. They face no financial hardship during the pandemic, and they're just being jerks, okay? And sometimes that's what tenants do. Sometimes tenants are jerks, and we should as landlords be able to remove those tenants from our properties and get paying tenants in them. But that is not the case because simply put, when they put these eviction rules and these eviction protections in place, they protect the good and the bad tenants just alike. So we end up with bad tenants who know they can abuse the system, know that they have nothing to worry about and we can't evict them. And I mean, that's a nightmare situation. We're gonna end up with landlords who are facing bankruptcy, landlords who are facing foreclosure, ruined credit, you know, mounting debt. Why should I have to spend all of my personal savings to house you? I shouldn't, no one should, okay? This is, uh, it's, it's just, it's a travesty of justice, okay? And it, it's ridiculous, and I'm not surprised to see that it's coming out of one of these very, very left-leaning places. So before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button, maybe leave a comment down below, and let me know what you think. Do you think it's cool that New York has such a huge backlog of eviction cases? I mean, they really need to get on it, okay? This is ridiculous, and when a small landlord has to, face you know the fact that they can't get these tenants out of their property it is the worst possible situation for them i am a small landlord i know just how bad it is when i have one tenant not paying and i have a lot more units than the the people in this article i mean they only have the one tenant okay they have a duplex they own a duplex and they live in the one unit and they rent out the other one and the tenant still screwed them over. So, I mean, th this is a horrible type of situation to be in. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, this article is coming from the New York Post, and it says, New York City landlord posts giant signs calling out non-paying tenants. Yeah, they, they felt that that was the only thing that they could do was just call them out, shame them, and maybe, maybe this tenant will get the point and either start paying or leave because, you know, if shame is all a landlord has as a weapon in a place like New York, that's pretty sad, okay? But anyway, let's get into the article and see what it says. In a sign of the times, a fed up Queens landlord posted two giant banners calling out his allegedly deadbeat tenants for owing him $17,000 in back rent. My tenants on the first floor are not paying rent, read the bold poster slung above the first floor rental on 175th Street in Springfield Gardens. Landlords Calvin and Gene Thompson posted the banners, which can be seen from the Belt Parkway in the hopes of shaming their tenants into paying up. It was also featured in a TikTok video <laughs> that got more than 14,000 likes and supportive comments like, not paying your bills is ghetto. Yeah, and <laughs> that, that's pretty sad. Now, I'm, I'm using the, the actual poster that they, uh, or the banner that they used, I'm using that as uh, the, the thumbnail for this video so that everyone can see exactly what it looks like. But I'll throw it up over here too, just in case you didn't get to see that. And as you can see, you know, I mean, there's nothing offensive about the banners, just stating the truth. And since they live, you know, in the unit where they're posting it, there's nothing that the, other, the tenant can do about it. 
Okay, so yeah, I don't think that shame works on this kind of tenant because if this tenant had any sensibilities or any respect or common sense, they wouldn't be not paying their landlord in the first place. So they have no shame. Okay, they have no shame. But if it makes the landlord feel better about the whole situation and the bad situation they're in, then I'm all for it. The Thompsons, who are married, have owned the two-family homes since 1989. They began the process of trying to evict Marie and Eugene Lamore and their daughter Kathia in Queens Housing Court last month. But with nearly 200,000 eviction cases pending in the city after pandemic protections and the state's eviction moratorium created a historic backlog, the landlords see humiliation as the next best tactic. The signs are very embarrassing and shameful for them, said the Thompson's son, Calvin Jr. That's the only voice we have at this stage, freedom of speech. Yeah, wow. Yeah, 200,000 case backlog. There's no way that they're going to be able to get through this in any short amount of time. It's going to be probably a few months at least, okay? So they're just stuck with these people. And say, you know, they owe them $17,000. I mean, it's a good thing that, hey, they haven't lost their property yet because if they lose their property, they lose their home too. That's something that a lot of people don't realize. A lot of landlords aren't rich. They're just people like this who own a two family. They live in one unit, they rent out the other, especially in a place like New York where housing is so expensive. A two family like this can be, you know, a million dollars in New York City, okay? You have no clue how expensive these are until you start looking at those real estate prices. If you you're from out of state like I am. But last time I was up in New York, I, I was like, I was, I was curious. I was like, what do, you know, uh, duplexes cost up in New York City, up in Queens? And, you know, I saw $800,000, $900,000, million dollars for a duplex. So yeah, if these people don't get their rent, it's, it's likely they could not be able to make their mortgage payment, lose their property, and then lose their home too. Is that what these, these renters want? This is a complete joke okay so let's keep going the signs seem to be working Kathy Lamore tried to cut one sign down Calvin Jr. claims when she calls Uber she won't do it in front of the house anymore he said she runs to the end of the block so they don't see them it's uncomfortable that we have to hang these up but we're twenty thousand dollars uncomfortable so I think a sign is very minor and they got, they got another picture here of uh, the, the landlords. And I, I want to post this up. And I'm doing this for a reason because a lot of the times they... they portray landlords as these you know, super rich people. And as you can see by this picture, these are just normal people who are just going about living their lives, right? And they don't deserve to be, you know, just completely screwed over by this tenant who is abusing them, okay? So, I mean, it just, it blows my mind that people, they always get the impression that landlords are super rich. They live out of state somewhere. They're sitting on the beach drinking Mai Tais and, you know, or, uh, flying around in private jets when a lot of the times landlords are people just like me, people just like you, who just are trying to, you know, live their lives and <laughs> we get screwed, we get categorized as being super rich when we're not. Problems began in July when the Thompsons raised the rent on Lamore's three bedroom pad from $1,800 a month to $1,900 a month, the first rent hike in nine years, according to Calvin Jr. The Lamores didn't want to pay the 5% increase. Kathia, who works for the City Department of Social Services and makes $46,731, according to GovSalaries.com, told the Post she tried to drop off $1,800 in rent instead of the new amount, but the Thompsons refused to take it, so she stopped paying altogether. So those last two paragraphs, they're kind of key, okay? So the landlord decided to raise the rent by $100 a month. Now, I, I realize a lot of the times, you know, any increase is gonna be harder for a tenant to pay. However, but they also said that they hadn't raised rent for 10 years. This, this tenants had been living in their property and the rent has been $1,800 a month for 10 years. So when they rose the rent to $1,900 a month, now all of a sudden the tenant's like, I, I can't pay that, that's too much. 
Well, you've been getting by without a rent increase for 10 years. And a, a, a 5% increase from $1,800 to $1,900 is not too much. It's not excessive. You know, even in a place like New York where there's rent control policies and all that, it, it doesn't seem like $100 a month would be excessive. And I don't even think this property would be covered by rent control, okay? But, I mean, I, I don't know for sure. I'm not a New Yorker. I don't know New York rental laws. But I'm, you know, I'm guessing that it's not covered by rent control. So, yeah, they, they refuse to pay that. Now, the second part, the second paragraph where it's important is they listed that the tenant actually works for the government. OK, and this is important because that tells you that one, we know exactly that the tenant is still getting paid even throughout the pandemic because government employees didn't lose their jobs. Government employees didn't lose their incomes through the pandemic. They didn't get shut down by the lockdowns or they, you know, they still got their paychecks. So there's no reason for this tenant not to continue to pay the rent. OK, then they also mentioned that the tenant tried to come over with the old, the original amount, just refused, flat out refused you know, the uh, the new rent and the landlords, they did the correct thing and they said, no, OK, you owe us nineteen hundred dollars a month and you're coming over here with eighteen hundred. That is not the rent amount. So we're not going to accept it. If the landlord did accept that amount, then they wouldn't have been able to go ahead and file eviction and get her out of there because, you know, that, that would be like they were working with her. I mean, and they, they did the right thing. They, you know, and hopefully they, they gave her all of the appropriate notice of the rent increase and everything. So, you know, all their uh, dot, I's are dotted and all their T's are crossed. But, you know, simply put, the tenant is the one who decided, well, I'm going to do what I want to do. And then if, if you raise the rent, right? Rather than, you know, just paying you that extra hundred bucks, I'm just not going to pay you anything at all. You know, you, this is why I say the tenant is a jerk, okay? The tenant is abusing this landlord and knowing the landlord won't be able to do anything about it. So in my opinion, here you, you work for the government, okay, of New York. I feel like that's an integrity issue. And I don't want somebody working for my government of my city and they don't have any integrity. So if you don't pay the debts you owe, you have no integrity in my mind, okay? You owe these people $20,000, you haven't paid it yet, and you know you can pay it because you still have a job, you have zero integrity. You're a piece of garbage. So yeah, I'm I'm frustrated by this whole article, this whole ordeal, and you know, I hope these landlords are able to get this tenant out of there and hang in there, okay? Landlords, you know, especially small landlords up in places like New York, York, you know, hang in there. It's, it's bad times. It's rough times. Inflation is rising. Things are getting more expensive. And you can't go 10 years without raising the rent on tenants, okay? If you're, you, as you can see from this story, you have to start raising rent as soon as possible. You have to keep it going, okay? Because this is the kind of situation you could end up in where the tenant feels entitled to that low rent. And that is not the kind of situation any landlord should ever be in.